So there's a great scene near the beginning of Shane Black's The Nice Guys, which more people should have seen in theaters, by the way. You know what? Fuck the Angry Birds. Anyway, where Ryan Gosling, a private investigator, breaks into a bar to get his hands on some receipts. Like we've seen people do a million times before in movies, Gosling is going to break the glass to unlock the door from inside. But things really don't go as planned. We're losing him! Go! Hurry up! Besides being a hilariously funny reversal and subversion of an old cliché, I think this moment gets to the heart of Shane Black's interest in awkward violence. And deeper than that, in film noir's obsession with violence as the undying backdrop to civilization. Speaking of backdrops, you may not be familiar with Shane Black, but his work has been in the backdrop of Hollywood for 30 years now. Starting as a writer during the spec script boom of the late 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, when unsolicited original scripts were in really high demand, Black wrote Lethal Weapon 1 and 2, The Last Boy Scout, Long Kiss Goodnight, then went on to direct his written work in films like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Iron Man 3, and finally The Nice Guys. All of these films share similar themes, all have fractured characters, all take place in dangerous, often seamy worlds, all have whip-fast plots, reversals, betrayals, and plenty of character-revealing banter. In other words, they all share the traits of film noir. There's a certain madness, I think, and a certain bizarre quality of violence in noir films where it's devastating. It's not just ongoing, it's not just <clears throat> clever, it's devastating. At this point, we're clearly not lacking in violence at the movies. Blockbuster and tentpole films are awash in this stuff. Explosions, car crashes, chases, fights, you name it. There are some directors and stunt coordinators who are really good at it. For example, the Captain America franchise, I think, has mastered a very sharp, hard-hitting type of superhero violence, where other franchises have struggled to meet that bar. But the thing about violence in superhero films is that it's fun, but never really that consequential, particularly if it's heroes fighting heroes. Come on, Black Widow, you know these people are slated until like 2022, right? A lot of these films add violence to the mix to spice up things every 20 minutes or so. They write themselves up to the brink and then let the stunt coordinators take it from there, making sure a few beats are hit along the way. This isn't necessarily bad, sometimes it's awesome, but it's not all that violence can do. The question you should be asking isn't where you should add violence, but how can you use it? Take that scene from the beginning with Gosling. It accomplishes so much in such a short period of time. It subverts a cliche for comedic effect. It's a quick reversal of narrative momentum. It shows how hapless Gosling's character is, and an accidental slitting of the wrist plays into the deeper sadness that underlies his drunkenness, a kind of Freudian slit. Shane Black is a master at using violence to augment story and character in his action thrillers and neo-noirs. Want to show that a police detective is past his prime? What if you want to show that a detective craves violence in an almost masochistic way? In Black's films, the violence is often messy and shocking and awkward because that's what real violence is like. It's a kind of chaos, a rupture in things. The inciting incident in A Long Kiss Goodnight is a perfect example of this. Gina Davis hits a deer with her car, which would be enough to send the car careening off the road by itself. But Black has the deer come through the windshield, still alive, kicking the passenger in the face. This is awkward and transfixing in a way that leaves us unguarded against the violence of the moment. In consequence, we become more present for the whole scene. The pencil trick in The Dark Knight, by the way, achieves a similar effect. Another thing Black likes to do is visit violence on an otherwise peaceful mood. Another thing that Black likes to do is visit violence on Maybe I should just let Black say it in his own words. In this country where we think everything's settled and, and stable and, and serene, something horribly violent can intrude upon our peace. And then we have to go back to this gunslinger who knew all along that the war wasn't over and the West wasn't gentrified. Black uses sudden violence not only to shock the audience, but as a way to justify and animate his heroes and heroines. The point is that this is violence with narrative purpose. That purpose may be as simple as keeping the audience on their toes, or fingers. Did I just cut off, cut off your finger? Yeah. It may be a way to solve a simple problem. <laughs> or it might reveal what a character's really like. Or who he would like to be. Just for a moment I felt useful. <laughs> 
We all live around violence, but by and large, we're separate from it. A good noir or thriller lets us travel to the other side, dip our feet into that current, feel how cold it is. If we've had the bad fortune to experience it firsthand, we know that violence can be indiscriminate and deeply personal at the same time. Violence done right in these movies, violence as a plot element or an exhibition of character, awkward violence, is violence respected. Of course, at the end of the day, these are just movies, pulpy detective stories, genre flicks. But I wouldn't want to live in a universe that didn't have pulpy genre detective movies like Lethal Weapon or Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I think Shane Black is one of the few action thriller writers who incorporates violence into his scripts creatively, and I'm glad he's still getting work. For that to keep happening, of course, we have to keep going to see his movies and others like it. Unless, that is, you're okay with the alternative. Eh? <laughs> To the birds? Hallelujah. There is a new Nerdwriter video every Wednesday, so if you go right to that box right there and click that, you'll subscribe and, and get all the videos, and that's what helps me out the most in this channel. Um, I gotta thank Squarespace for helping to sponsor this video, funding the channel without asking to interfere in the content, which is really, really cool. Um, they make sleek, intuitive websites. You don't have to know coding to make one. And if you go to squarespace.com and sign up for one year, you'll get a free domain name. And if you use the offer code NERDWRITER, you'll get 10% off your first purchase for all you website heads out there. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys next Wednesday.